In such an orbit, the sun is not at the center, but is offset. It's at one focus of the ellipse. When a given planet is at the far point in its orbit from the sun, it goes more slowly. As it approaches the near point, it speeds up. Such motion is why we describe the planets as forever falling towards the sun, but never reaching it. Kepler's first law of planetary motion is simply this. A planet moves in an ellipse with the sun at one focus. As the planet moves along its orbit, it sweeps out in a given period of time an imaginary wedge-shaped area. When the planet is far from the sun, the area is long and thin. When the planet is close to the sun, the area is short and squat. Although the shapes of these wedges are different, Kepler found that their areas are exactly the same. This provided a precise mathematical description of how a planet changes its speed in relation to its distance from the sun. Now, for the first time, astronomers could predict exactly where a planet would be in accordance with a simple and invariable law. Kepler's second law is this. A planet sweeps out equal areas in equal times. Kepler's first two laws of planetary motion may seem a little remote and abstract. Uh, all right, planets move in ellipses and they sweep out equal areas in equal times. So what? It's not as easy to grasp as circular motion. We might have a tendency to dismiss it, to say it's a mere mathematical tinkering, something removed from everyday life. But these are the laws our planet itself obeys as we, glued by gravity to the surface of the Earth, hurtle through space. We move in accord with laws of nature, which Kepler first discovered. When we send spacecraft to the planets, when we observe double stars, when we examine the motion of distant galaxies, we find that all over the universe, Kepler's laws are obeyed. Many years later, Kepler came upon his third and last law of planetary motion, a law which relates the motion of the various planets to each other, which lays out correctly the clockwork of the solar system. He discovered a simple mathematical relationship between the size of a planet's orbit and the average speed at which it travels around the sun. This confirmed his long-held belief that there must be a force in the sun that drives the planets, a force stronger for the inner fast-moving planets and weaker for the outer slow-moving planets. Isaac Newton later identified that force as gravity, answering at last the fundamental question, what makes the planets go? Kepler's third or harmonic law states that the squares of the periods of the planets, the time for them to make one orbit, are proportional to the cubes, the third power, of their average distances from the sun. So the further away a planet is from the sun, the slower it moves, but according to a precise mathematical law. Kepler was the first person in the history of the human species to understand correctly and quantitatively how the planets move, how the solar system works. The man who sought harmony in the cosmos was fated to live at a time of exceptional discord on Earth. Exactly eight days after Kepler's discovery of his third law, there occurred in Prague an incident that unleashed the devastating Thirty Years' War. The war's convulsions shattered the lives of millions of people. Kepler lost his wife and young son to an epidemic spread by the soldiery. His royal patron was deposed, and he was excommunicated from the Lutheran Church for his uncompromising independence on questions of belief. He was a refugee once again. The conflict, portrayed on both sides as a holy war, was more an exploitation of religious bigotry by those hungry for land and power.
This war introduced organized pillage to keep armies in the field. The brutalized population of Europe stood by helpless as their plowshares and pruning hooks were literally beaten into swords and spears. Rumor and paranoia swept through the countryside, enveloping especially the powerless. Among the many scapegoats chosen were elderly women living alone who were charged with witchcraft. Kepler's mother was taken away in the middle of the night in a laundry chest. It took Kepler six years of unremitting effort to save her life. In Kepler's little hometown, about three women were arrested, tortured, and killed as witches every year between 1615 and 1629. And Katerina Kepler was a cantankerous old woman. She engaged in disputes which annoyed the local nobility, and she sold drugs. Poor Kepler thought that he himself had contributed inadvertently to his mother's arrest. It came about because he had written one of the first works of science fiction. It was intended to explain and popularize science and was called The Somnium, The Dream. 